Hey, this is Where the World is Reverend Rod, and you'll see that we're not in the church today. In fact, we're a long way from church, but I've got something that might help us find our way. It's in my pocket here. A good friend of mine, Spencer Chandler, who's a member of our church, lent me his compass. Now, if you've never used a compass before, it's an interesting thing. It'll tell you what direction north is. And I have a feeling that we need to come north to find out today's lesson. So we're going to follow this up a little bit. Uh, Spencer, speaking of scouts, will actually tell you that there's a merit badge called Orienteering. And that's a merit badge. It'll tell you how to read maps, all different kind of maps. But it'll also tell you how to read a compass. This is before the days of... Um, things on the internet, things on our cell phones. So a compass was a pretty important thing to have at a certain day. But we're going to follow that compass a little bit more and see what we can see. Some of you may not have ever been this way. Some of you, it looks a little familiar to you. Uh, we have a setting here. We're at this new place. And a symbol. Now, there's somebody over here. Well, hey, Miss Doris Flower. It's so interesting to meet you here. So nice to meet you here. Tell us a little bit about where we are. You are at North Hills Christian School, and we are a ministry that's been here in Salisbury for over 50 years. And we have from junior kindergarten through high school here on this campus. I see. And what do you do? I am the AIM director. I've taken a lot of positions through the years, but right now this is where God has placed me. And what I do is help incoming kids to get adjusted and fill in the gaps in their learning where they, in order to get them acclimated. You've done a lot of different things. I've been here this, I just finished my 42nd year. 42nd year. You started when you were five years old. Right. Uh huh. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. Now, you mentioned that uh, we usually don't see you, but we usually see you at the organ at the church. Right. So you, we know you play the organ, but you mentioned something about it. Here. And I want to find out about that a little bit later. But I want to find out how you got here because your accent is not from the south. <laughs> I don't see grits flying out of your mouth when you're talking. I've been here a lot of years, though, so <laughs> it's better. Um, I was a waitress uh, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and happened to be working the Thursday night before my graduation from college. And I was talking to some of my first customers that evening, and as I walked away from their table, this gentleman with a very thick southern accent called me over to his table, and he said, my mama told me never to eavesdrop on people, but I happen to hear that you're looking for a teaching position, and I happen to know of one at a Christian school in Salisbury, North Carolina. Now, I had asked God for ability to be involved in ministry, and preferably upper elementary, sixth grade was my passion, and to be involved in music, but had no idea that God would say North Carolina. I really didn't. At the time, I thought I was taking a position with my homeschool district, and if he wasn't going to take me there, he was going to take me to Haiti as a missionary. So when he said North Carolina, I was like, okay. And that was not a mission <laughs> field that you thought of. Was it wasn't what I was thinking. Now, that's a long way from Pennsylvania. It was. But a couple weeks went by, and I wasn't sure I was getting the other job, so I followed through on this, and sure enough, this was exactly what I would ask God for. You'd ask God for a uh, position, and uh, all these kind of things, and ministry, and it has something to do with music and things like mm -hmm. that, and you found that all here. Well, <laughs> God had it all here. Oh, before. you didn't find it. God had you waiting for you. There's no doubt in my mind that, that Mr. Smith was where he was, and I was where I was, so that God could put us together. I had only worked at that particular restaurant for a couple months, and I've said to Mr. Smith quite often, well, it's good God relocated me, and he told me if if... I was supposed to meet him, that he would have gotten hungry for ice cream, and he would have gone to the place I was working <laughs> for. <laughs> so, so God orchestrated. God orchestrated this. You didn't just didn't happen to be at this place. There was a purpose. There was unseen hand and working your life. There was a direction that found you. It sounds like. 
Absolutely. That person that found you, and, and also work through the other person too. And everybody in the situation. And when you came in to interview with the with the film, it was exactly what I had asked them for. I've done everything I was looking for. And yes, it was 500 miles away from my home. And I was an only child, so my mother did not like my living here. But I knew I was going with God would have a place for me to work. And at the time, I didn't know it was going to be 42 years. But God literally has taken my life and has made it take place here. He must and want you here beautiful. for a long time. I think he did, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Now, this is amazing. Now, uh, if, if we didn't get it on tape the first time, there's a guy sitting in this room who you met along the way. <laughs> Absolutely. My husband came into the picture a couple of years later uh, when I guess God was making it certain to me that he was going to keep me here because Steve had been here all his life. So he gave you a job, gave you just what you asked for, and then he threw in Steve to boot. Well, and I have a letter that talks about what I want in a husband. Um, I, I do a lot of letters to God, and God gave me what I was looking for in a husband as well. You know, you must be an awfully good, you're almost a saint. No, I don't for think God so. To, to lead you in this way? Does he lead everybody in this way? I think if you're open to let God do the leading, that he will gladly direct our paths. I, I just that. think that you need to be willing to surrender it to him and let him show you which way you're supposed so to go. So even if we've made some mistakes in our life, and we may be even a little bit older, because sometimes older kids watch this too, any time we can turn around and let God lead, like that new star. Right. Right. such a nice thank you so much for sharing. Glad to share. You do thank here. you for the Thank you for being here also. <laughs> so when we see you at the order, we recognize That's you. That's right. <laughs> All right. I think if you make yourself available to God, He will lead. In fact, the verse that in this that I wrote afterward to remind myself of those steps. The verse that keeps popping out here is Romans 8, 28. Oh. That all things will work together for good yeah. if we love God. That sounds like one you're going to need purpose. to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. So uh, that says that all things, I mean, the fact that he was there, that you were there, that even one of you no, had really planned to be here, and he called you to a place that you've never even heard of before, and there was a piano. Yeah, I, I love that. It's just a little smile from God. A little wink from God. This is exactly what he wants. Absolutely. Now, I, uh, there's one part of the story that I wonder where it happened. There's a man sitting in the corner over there. His name is Steve. Mm -hmm. Could you, camera person, would you pan over there and say, Steve? <laughs> He shared this story, too. What well, happened? He, he wasn't at that point. I was here about four years, and he ran across someone in a restaurant that he had known for years and said, I know of someone who, at that time, I was playing organ for their church, and called, and called him up and said, I've got somebody for you to meet, so I arranged a blind date for us. So the lesson, kids, is go to restaurants a lot of people. <laughs> A the restaurant is be open to God and just let God open the door. So you found a job. You found a nice guy. And actually, yeah. in one of my letters uh, that I have here, I wrote a letter to God asking for that kind of God. And you got him? And I got him. Yeah. Oh, he's a nice guy. Don't, please don't tell him I said that. <laughs> but he is really a nice guy. He is a nice guy. So God has given you direction just one place after another. A marvelous story that you've got here. Now, uh, what, uh, tell us a little bit more about the AIM program. Okay. AIM stands for Academic Individualization and Modification. And those are big words that just says when a student comes in, I test them to see where they are academically. And if they're not on grade level, then it's my job to come up with a program that will hopefully move them toward grade level. So you help them find direction, too. I help them. Oh. So or help their parents find direction. That's right. Well, yes, because exactly. a lot of times it's the parents that are looking for something to oh. help meet the needs of their kids. I bet you make a lot of parents happy. I try to. I try to be the answer to prayer for a lot of parents. Well, you <laughs> certainly have had your prayer answers. 
So you're just passing yes. it on, aren't you? Yes. What a great story. A marvelous story. Um, uh, it made me think of how God calls us all. And I've got a story about one, it. Would be okay? One. Let me read it. Uh, 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 it's probably one you've heard before. It comes from Genesis chapter 12. It's about the call of a man named Abram. Uh, here's the first part of chapter 12 of Genesis, the book of the beginnings. The Lord called to Abraham and said, Go from your country, Pennsylvania or someplace like that, your people, your family, and your friends, and your father's household, to the land I'll show you, which is North Carolina in your case. I'll, give, I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you. And I'll make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. And I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all the people in the world will be blessed through you. What a great thing to have happen is that if you find your direction, you can bless other people and help them find their direction. So Abram went, and the Lord had told where the Lord had told him. And Lot, his family member, went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they could accumulate, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for a land they know not of. They'd never been before, much like North Carolina. Only it was called Canaan uh, for Abram. And they arrived there. And it says, the Bible says, that Abram built an altar there, built a memorial there to signify that God had appeared to him in this vision. And from there he went to the hills east of Bethel. Bethel means the house of God, by the way. and pitched his tent at Bethel on the uh, west and I on the east. Those are directions of compass, by the way. And there he built another altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. You know, in your story, um, I've heard you call on the name of the Lord a lot in that story. Uh, he seems to be an important part of your story. And even the place where you're working, I look behind you and see NHCS, North Hills Christian School. So, this is not just a job for you, it's a ministry. Absolutely. This is, this is your calling. That's an interesting word. I like that word because it's different than God, isn't it? Uh, in Latin, calling your voice. And I think you found your voice not only with teaching the game program, but also in the music. And it's interesting, you're one of our instrumentalists that don't use their voice, <laughs> but use an instrument. That's your voice. We appreciate that so much. Uh, uh, let me find out, what did you have to learn, what did you have to do to be able to do what you do to help kids who have some special needs find the, that direction? I knew from before I ever went to college that God had gifted me to teach. Mm -hmm. It was just very obvious. I think God gifts all of us in different ways. Uh -huh. And it was something I thoroughly enjoyed doing. And I found it very fruitful. So that's what I went to college to major oh, in. I see. So you had that feel. Other people probably said, you're really good at this. And then you went with that and went to school, got some training. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So some diseducation and things like that. So these little kids who feel like God is calling them, they might need to find out what it's kind of prepare themselves to, to hone that gift a little bit. I think you're right. Gifts are given, whether we uh, work on them or not. I was in a church that allowed us lots of opportunities to work with the younger kids and things like that as we were getting older. So I was already teaching a Sunday school class and things like that before I went to college. I had had some experience that allowed me to know that that was in there. And I helped to run a Bible school with my, my minister's wife in another church and things like that. So I think if you watch for God to give you opportunities, he'll also show you the She's telling a minister of education that she can <laughs> teach Sunday school and she's done Bible school. I just want you to know how God works here. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now, I know that what you do at the church is important and what you do here is obviously important, but you have a family. Um, is there anything that you can pray for your family? For me, obviously, a big part of me is what goes on here and for the future of any ministry like this as we look at what we've ended the school year with. That's a big part of 
my desire is that when we open for the fall, we do it well, that everybody's safe. And my husband doesn't have a job right now, but, just, but you know, God continued to provide and lead. The same with my boys who are still working. But, you know, God keeps us all safe and provides for our needs. I, I truly see God as a provider. And he delights to show us the way if we stay geared to him. So I, that's my family, this ministry, that we follow God. Oh, what a great thing. What a great thing. Following God. Uh, there's no better way to find your direction than following God because he's always headed in the right way. You know, I, you being a teacher, I found that something about this compass, and I want to share it with you. Um, this compass is based on magnetic fields. You probably know that. There's a little magnet in this compass, and the Earth is a magnet too. The core of the Earth is a big magnet, and I found out that that's how a compass works. That if you want to find that true north, you can do that because of the. Uh, magnetic field of the Earth reacts to the magnetic field in the uh, compass, and you can find north, with the exception of if you get closer to the poles, and then it doesn't work very well. So sometimes, even a compass doesn't work very well, so it doesn't work as well as God does many times. But I found out that God provided us something a long time ago, before compasses, before GPSs, that is our science lesson today. And I want you to see this a little bit. Um, there is, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of the North Star. You can find your direction in life by knowing where the North Star is. Now, the astronomical name for the North Star is Polaris. Um, and you can find these uh, Polaris, of the North Star, by finding first the Big Dipper. In Latin, it's called Ursa Major. Uh, Ursa is the word for bear, and major is the word for big bear, is the phrase for big bear, and it's also in the big bear contains the Big Dipper. If you will see, find that, it's easy to find in the northern sky, and that's where we live in the northern hemisphere. You can follow the outside of the cut straight down south, and the brighter star that you see on the little dipper is the North Star. And that never changes. I was reading something this past week that said, isn't it amazing that it just so happens that that's where the North Star is? Of course, as Christians, and your story certainly reminds us, that nothing really just happens, does it? This was planned as your life is planned, as young Steve's life is planned, and his next job is waiting for him out there. We know that. And your life is planned, too, as you watch this. So I want you to remember, and uh, how do you find the North Star? Maybe you want to go out tonight and get your parents' help and find that North Star and realize it always points to true north, just like Christ points for your true direction in life. Now, Ms. Plummer mentioned this verse in her story, and I wanted you to see this verse, and this is a good verse to memorize. It sounds like you memorized that. That's how you knew it. We know that in all things, God works for the good for those who love him. There's a condition. And those who have been called according to his purposes. That means if you really love God, and if you really seek his will, he's going to help you find that direction, just like you found this promise direction. But we are so happy that he led you to us here. And I'm thankful he brought us to First Baptist. It's been a blessing. We are thrilled. We are thrilled. There's just one last thing. If you want to find out a little bit more about compasses, about things like that, let me find the correct paper here. <clears throat> a suggested resource that you might want to find on your computer is www.education.com Science Fair article, How Does a Compass Work? And it'll actually give you a science fair project that you might want to do while you're at home. Uh, to work on it in your free time. I know you've got a lot of it these days. We all do. So uh, do this. Remember your North Star. Remember to say hi to Miss Plummer when you see her playing the organ. <laughs> and even young Steve over there. Remember to say hi to Steve. That's what he'll do. <laughs> and we will see you next week. Where in the world is Reverend Ryan? See you later.